It's pretty calm. I like the song. So um, welcome to the channel. This is going to be the first video. So let's let's give a very brief channel introduction. But to start off, um, I don't exactly know where I want to go with the channel, but it is going to be within the realm of web design and web development. Um, but I'm currently like learning React uh, and Next.js, Next.js, which is React, but you get the point. So take every development video with a grain of salt. But you know that's the purpose of the of the um, of the channel is to sort of for me to learn and to share that knowledge with with you. And hopefully you're gonna find that helpful. Um, and sort of you know I don't want it to be like a one sided YouTube channel. I sort of want it to be like um, like get knowledge, share that you know, and take take feedback in you know, keep reiterating on the content, so on and so forth. So it's, it's sort of, I want to keep that loop going. And for this video, I thought I'd keep it pretty simple. It's just like a Figma redesign of something that I found on uh, front end men front end mentor. It's a multi-step form. And, you know, I thought I'd just, you know, keep it simple, recreate the thing on Figma. Hopefully you're going to find it useful. Uh, it is not like by it's not it's not like tough or anything, but you know we do use a little bit of auto layout. Don't worry if you don't know what that means. We're gonna go step by step into how to use Figma, and I'm just gonna make sure to explain everything like in detail. Uh, but with that being said, hopefully you're gonna find this uh, video helpful, and uh, let's get started. All right, first things first, we give ourselves a desktop frame. And then these are the colors I'm using. So feel free to use the same ones or pick a color scheme of your own. Uh, I then like to start off by giving myself a layout grid. I always use a 12 column layout grid for desktop frames. So count set to 12, margin to 160 pixels, and then gutter to 32. That sort of leaves us with uh, 1,120 pixels, which is sort of like the safe area that we can design in. Uh, so I'll start off by using the rectangle tool, giving the height to be 560 pixels and just making sure that the width it covers three columns. Uh, I'll then click Alt and Shift and drag and make this into a five column uh, rectangle. Here, um, then we'll adjust the colors, just give the background to be like a light blue and these to be navy blue for now. Uh, next step is giving myself padding of 20 pixels. Uh, you, can, you can do that in any way you want, but I use um, just two squares, 20 pixels by 20 pixels, align them towards the edges and then grabbing another rectangle and sending that to back. Press Control Shift and the left square bracket, and that sort of sends it all the way to the back. Um, and just make sure to adjust like the edges of the container, that white container. We can then get rid of uh, the red squares because their job here is done. I'll just hide the rectangle on the right. I'll come back to that later, and then have like a border radius of seven pixels. Now for the side bar, I want to sort of above that fill, add another fill, an, another image fill. I choose the image. Um, it's just an image I found on Unsplash. And then just make the opacity of that image to be 100%. I'll decrease it a, a little bit actually. So let's go like 80% or even 70%. But we, I changed the, the, fill mo the, uh, the, the mode from fill to crop. And I start like adjusting, adjusting it here. Uh, you sort of don't want it to be too overpowering um, and just put it in a position where, you know, it doesn't interfere so much with the text. Um, but still, I, I am going to, you know, decrease the opacity here to 70% and then add a gradient above of both of my fields, um, just so I can give myself some extra contrast between the image, the background and the text that's going to go above. So. Just select both the colors to be like the navy blue that I have and then like a lighter blue of that same navy blue and make that to be 100%. This is how the gradient looks like. Obviously, that's not what you want. So take the end color and decrease the opacity to zero. And then we have this very nice gradient right above our image. 
where we can then safely add our text without interfering too much with the background. Just make the frame of the, the desktop frame that we have a little bit darker, just to have enough contrast between the white uh, form background and the page background. Now onto the text, I use, honestly, I like enter, but I wanted to use something else. So I went for poppins. Um, yeah. And you can, you can use regular or medium. Just make sure you don't go too light because it's sort of like on some screens, it might be too illegible. Legibility is very important here. Just adjust these, uh, sizes. Um, I chose 16 here and, and 13 and I decrease the opacity of the step one. Um, a little bit, so it's 80%. So I click Shift and A here to make it into an auto layout between the uh, for the two text layers and decrease the spacing to be a negative two, just to bring things closer together. Now we go to add the circle with the number uh, uh, signifying the step that we're on. So I just make this a little bolder. So I just go for a semi bold here and click Shift A. Now we have another auto layout. Just uh, let me give a stroke here so you guys see what, what's going on. And we sort of want it to be a fixed width. Um, so I'm adjusting the frame size here to be 27 pixels by 27 pixels and just giving a very high radius and making that auto layout to be centered in the middle. And then selecting our first auto layout and the one that we just made. And again, clicking Shift and A to make it into another auto layout. And now there we go. We have like a container for our step. Just so you know, this is how the auto layout currently looks. So the idea here is I want this sort of the step container to take up the full width of the background. So I'm just adjusting the frame width to take that. And then I'm decreasing the frame width by 40 pixels. That sort of should give me 20 pixels to the left and right and giving myself padding of 10 uh, pixels top and bottom and 15 pixels left and right and adjusting the border radius to be seven now for the fill i don't want it to be a solid i want it to be sort of a linear gradient as well looks kind of nice so have have it like white um have like the fill to be 16 percent 15 percent and then adjusting the we can even go to 10 percent and adjusting the uh, the colors themselves yeah, so now that's done, we can also give an effect of a background blur that sort of blurs the background a, li a little bit, not too much. Let's like we can go for eight pixels of blur. Um, and this is sort of the active state of our steps. Now what we can do is we can start duplicating and just so you can see like the background blur. This is what it does, it sort of blurs in the background a little bit, gives it more legibility. But since this is not going to be an active step, uh, I'm just going to start like adding in the text. So just speed this up. So once all the text is added up, uh, you can, you can distribute vertically or just add it into an auto layout and then adjust the, the spacing. I go for like 10 pixels. Um, and then again, like if you find that, you know, the, it needs to be more, you need to move the background image. So make sure like you go back to the fill and, you know, play around with, with the, with the background, put it in a position where you think works. Um, like, I'm not sure exactly how I want it to like experiment, uh, until you find something that you sort of like. You can experiment with the rotation, scale, position, but yeah, I sort of end up here, which I think looks pretty, pretty clean. Another thing before we move on to uh, the other section is just adjusting everything here to have 20 pixels from the top two. And then let me go back and just collapse everything here and unhide the rectangle that we made at first. And now I want to also give myself 20 pixels of padding here. So I'm going to use the same technique of uh, making a rectangle to be 20 pixels by 20 pixels and just aligning it to the edges of um, my rectangle here. 
and then sort of reposition rescaling my container that's going to be like this the area where i can add in my input fields and my text so i'll just click shift and r to bring up my rulers so so that i can safely delete uh, all the scaffolding <laughs> that i've done here and i sort of just select everything and delete it now we can start adding in the text safely since i know exactly where i want the, the content to be with these boundaries i'll just start adding in uh, the the heading here like make sure like you bump up the 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 text size, I choose 23 pixels here, but you know, you can go a little higher if you want. Selecting a navy blue, because it's not a very good idea to select pure black or pure white um, for text. And then just having like a subheading here that needs to be um, a lower at a lower opacity and like way tinier than the heading. Not too tiny, but like let's say 13 or 12 pixels. No, and like I said, we don't want to go for like a light, a very light font weight. So I just go for like a 60% opacity here as well. I auto layout this and also decrease the spacing between both to negative two, just to bring everything together. Um, and then I found out, you know, it's negative two might be too much. So let's just stick it. Let's stick it with zero. Just have a little bit more spacing. Then for the input fields, I'll just create a rectangle from the edges of my bounding box. Um, and then getting, getting rid of the fill and adding a stroke of that same navy blue. And let's like make it at an opacity of 15%, maybe 20%. And um, have the border radius set to four pixels. And we want to add their labels next. So I'll just copy paste what we have here and then just change this to name right sort of also adjust the positioning here you can also make this into an auto layout by cl clicking shift and a and adjusting the spacing between the input and the label so i think having the label at an opacity of 80 percent is um is pretty good but i sort of wanted to be consistent with the one above so i'll just i end up using 60 percent anyways and having the auto layout distance um spacing to be five pixels and then again alt shift and drag duplicate it two times now we have three input fields one for the name one for the email and one for the phone number and once i'm done with um with those input fields i select everything and um, those three auto layouts and then make that as well into an auto layout so that we can adjust the spacing between them and I set it to be 25 pixels just roughly moving it up here just things where my eyes feel comfortable looking at the thing and then the last thing is adding the button so I just grab a text tool use regular font 12 pixels for next step then I sort of can use the, the arrow tool but I want to have my own arrow here so Use the pen tool to create an arrow and um, going for the rounded endpoints and the rounded join. And I select both and click Shift A just to make it into an auto layout as well and uh, have a spacing of like seven. We go for selecting, um, making everything in that button to be. Uh, white and then the background or the fill of that auto layout to be the navy blue that we have and as you can see the button doesn't look so good right now but just with a little bit of padding we can fix it so eight pic uh, pixels top and bottom and then 13 left and right and like uh, let's give it a four pixel uh, border radius the arrow of the arrow you think looks uh, you know too uh, too big or too small so you can adjust the size of the arrow and then once that's done, we can sort of align it back. Then click Shift and R to hide the everything. And you know you can you can start grouping things right now. So I put this in an auto layout as well. And then the steps on the left in their own auto layout as well. Um, and that sort of like 
is, is helpful later if you want to add extra steps. Then I group everything and then use the align tools towards the bottom top to align it to the middle of our canvas here. And yeah, that um, we are done. And that should be it. Uh, I hope you found this video helpful. If so, please leave a comment down below. Let me let me know what you think. Uh, if you have anything like any ideas for a future tutorial, please let me know. Uh, I always, like I said, I, I want to take feedback. I want to sort of see what works and what doesn't and iterate upon that. Uh, but with that being said, again, thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next one.